It's time now for Uncancelled, in which we tackle the dark underbelly of the news agenda. Today, the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, Scott Mo to his friends, has announced it's time for Australia to get back to normal. Well, surely that can't happen too soon, following months of appalling footage like this. I literally am standing here eating my kebab. No, not all right. How are you meant to calm down when people are doing this? There you go. That's not even the half of it. Just why did Australia, a truly great country, react in such a draconian manner towards its famously laid-back and freedom-loving people? What might be the legacy of this brutal and unforgiving approach by the state and law enforcement? And will Australia ever be the same again to discuss this? I'm delighted to welcome the highly respected media writer at the Australian newspaper, Sophie Ellsworth. Hi, Sophie. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm really well. Brilliant to have you back on the programme. Uh, things were looking pretty bad there for a while. Is there hope now for Australians? Well, Mark, I'd love to say that there is hope, but sadly, there's not a lot of hope. I'm here in Melbourne, Australia, obviously, and we up to, uh, on Monday, 246 days in harsh lockdown since this pandemic began. We're going to be the most locked down city in the world, Mark. Now I'm living here under a curfew. At nine o'clock, we must be inside our homes. We can't have any visitors to our homes. We can't go to work. We can't go to school. This just never ends, Mark. We're wearing masks indoors, outdoors. We've got police monitoring us all the time. We're worried about our neighbors dobbing on us. And you've seen some of that vision that's gone global. Uh, this is just crazy what's going on here, here, Mark, and people have just had enough. I can't tell you how much I love Australia, what it's given to the world, and most importantly, it's amazing people. Um, are you concerned about the image of Australia in the course of this pandemic with these measures, of just how Australia is now perceived as the world watches in shock and horror? Absolutely, Mark. I mean, we were known as the laid back Aussies, a bit knockabout. We didn't really care too much about, you know, nothing really bothered us. But now we've turned into this COVID crazy society where each day, Mark, we wait for the government to release case numbers here in Melbourne and in each state on how many cases there are. And then we've panicked. In Melbourne yesterday, we had over a thousand cases and there is sheer panic. We were aiming for COVID zero here in Australia. Then we had the Delta variant strike and the politicians realised pretty quickly they could not stamp this out. Now that vision on the screen, that was protests with freedom protesters begging to be released from these harsh lockdowns. And they went to the Shrine of Remembrance in, Austra in Melbourne, Australia, which is a sacred place. Uh, to remember our fallen, and we had people there protesting, uh, praying for their civil liberties. We've just had everything stripped from us, Mark. We've basically got no democracy anymore, and we've been told to stay in our homes, do the right thing, and we've got no end in sight. I mean, in Melbourne, we're meant to be in harsh lockdown until at least the end of October. I've already been in lockdown for a seven day lockdown from the start of August, Mark. That was only meant to go for a week. And we're now into our 10th week of that. I mean, Sophie, what has that done to your mental and physical well being and that of your family and friends? Well, look, Mark, I'm pretty lucky. I've got a job. As you know, I'm a journalist. Uh, it's a busy time for journalists. The media are quite fortunate in that way. But I've got many friends, Mark, who have businesses closed. They've lost everything. It's very damaging to mental health. We've got kids who have almost missed out on two years of being in the classroom. We've got university students that can't get into the country from overseas. We've got university classes all remote. We've got all of our uh, shops shut, bar essential services, such as supermarkets, chemists, 
Uh, we can't really socialise with many people. We've got caps on what we can do. I mean, just the other day, the government here said five fully vaccinated people could have a picnic in the park. But anyone who's familiar with Melbourne knows at this time of year, the weather's pretty bad. So all weekend it's raining anyway. So you can't really do that. We had a situation, Mark, where they opened up the golf courses this week. Golf was suddenly safe. But then the government decided that uh, toilets, you cannot go to the toilet at the golf course. So they've locked all the toilets off at all the golf clubs. Now, a lot of people who play golf, Mark, are older. They need to go to the bathroom. This is just crazy stuff that's been implemented here. And people have become so used to having all their civil liberties stripped from them. And what did the Prime Minister say in relation to freedom? Because uh, we, we've heard reports that he's been saying to Australians, it's time to give you your freedom back. Are those empty words? Well, they are a bit, Mark, because at the moment, for instance, I can't go more than 15 kilometres from my house. We have border closures internally here. You can't jump between states. He did announce uh, yesterday here in Australia that we were opening up our international borders to let Australians home and you'd only have to quarantine for seven days at your own house instead of being in hotel quarantine for two weeks. So that was a big development, but we're still shut off to tourists. We feel like we're pretty much a hermit kingdom, Mark, and we have a lot of people from Australia that weren't born here. They have relatives overseas. They've been cut off now, Mark, for almost two years. This is heartbreaking for a lot of people. And I think eventually a lot of people will leave Australia.